friends, Satyendra here and in this video, let's understand the concept of mapping, the need of mapping and the procedure of mapping. So let's get started. So the first question is what is mapping? So mapping is nothing but placing a texture or an image onto a surface and the surface can be either a planar surface or a cylindrical surface or a spherical surface. Now the second question is why mapping is needed? And to understand this, the best example is this part itself. This is a perforated sheet which we are not going to manufacture. We will buy a ready-made sheet like this. We will cut this sheet as per our requirement and we will use this in our assembly. So in such cases, when we are modeling this, we never create holes and pattern it. Because creating a hole and patterning it increases the file size like anything. And we are not going to manufacture this, so we don't require hole position and other details. We just need a feel of perforated sheet by this part. So in such cases, placing a perforated sheet image onto the surface of this part is good enough for our requirement. It will not only reduce the file size of this part, but it will give the better feel inside the assembly. So this was the actual need of mapping. Mapping gives a realistic feel of the product. Now the next thing is the procedure of mapping. And to understand that, let's remove the texture of this part. So now this part is without any texture and we will reapply the same texture using mapping. And for that first go to appearance, select any material, I will select this material and then I will go for part, I will select this part, enter. Now the material is applied, now you can see that. Now I will go to the same material, right click and edit. Here I have option called properties, texture, bump and decal. There are four tabs here. I need to go to the texture. Here go down and say image. Now browse the image. I select mesh. Now go to the dropper and select the surface. Now see your image is mapped on this surface. Now here you have different options, each option will do something, so we will go one by one to each option. Now if you are using Creo 4 or higher version, then you get window like this, but if you are using Creo 3 or lower version, then you get window like this. So all the options are same, just the placement is different. Now in Creo 4 and higher version, you get four tabs here, properties, texture, bump and decal. And in Creo 3 and lower version, you get basic and map two tabs and inside the map you have all three options. Bump, color texture, decal. The dropper is same here and here. Now these options, parametric and other options, you have directly in Creo 4 and higher version. But in Creo 3 and lower version, once you apply the dropper, this icon get highlighted and uh, Using this icon, you can get these options. So when you use this option, then you get options like this, which is similar to these options. Now you have type, mapping type here. Here it is type. And these options are given here. Then you have single and multiple option in Creo 3 or lower version. And now these two are combined and it is called repeat texture or pattern texture in Creo 4 and higher version. Now let's understand the mapping in detail. So this is the only area where you have everything related to mapping. So using this area you can do all kind of mapping. Now if I start from here, this is the material name which is applied to this part. Then you have properties, texture, image, you have selected the image. You can remove this image using this. Then you have flip vertically, flip horizontally, pattern. Now the next thing is the type. So there are different type of mapping, planar, cylindrical, spherical, box and parametric. Then you have an option called pole, which is used to align the texture image to the surface of the part. Then you have X direction scale, Y direction scale. Then you have image position in X direction, then image position in Y direction. 
and then rotate. This is used to rotate the image. Now we will try these options one by one. But first I will just close this. I will remove once again the whole appearance. Now my part is blind. I will go to the appearance. I will select one material. I will apply to this part. Material is applied. Now once again I will go to appearance. I will edit this material. Texture. Image. Browse the image. Same image I will take. Dropper. Drop this. Now this is the output you are getting. Now this output you are getting by default. Because the system selects parametric. The last mapping option automatically. And the parametric option is nothing but the automatic mapping option. So system automatically try to map the image. If it is suitable for you, you can go with this. Otherwise, you can select your required option from other options. Now if you go inside this, you have other four options other than parametric. So first let's understand these options and then I'll go for planar one. So the first option is planar. And this is used when the surface is totally flat. The second option is cylindrical and this is used when you have a cylinder or a cylindrical face. Spherical is used for sphere like a ball. If you have a ball type of model then you have box. Box is again a planar one but there is a difference between box and planar. If you select box your texture image will be mapped to all six sides of the box but if you go with planar one then your texture image will be mapped with parallel surfaces. So to understand let's select the box and now if you rotate this you can see here that this option is trying to map this image onto this surface side surface also. But if you go for planar then this is an extruded one. This is a parallel one. Now you see This image is like a extruded one. If you change to box, then the system is trying to map the same image onto this surface also. So if you have a box type of structure, then box option is helpful. But if you have a thin sheet, then the planar one will be helpful. So in this case, I need a planar one. So I'll go with planar one. So I'll select the planar one. Now if you see this, There are a lot of drag handles coming here and there and this looks like a tilted one. So the best way to use planar mapping is first you make it normal. Once it is normal, you go to parametric and then go for planar. Now you see, your mapping texture is normal to the surface. It is not tilted. So whenever you are trying to map a flat surface, first you make your surface normal and then go for planar. Now here you have these two drag handle through which you can scale up, scale down the image. If you want these holes very small, then still you can reduce from both sides. And these handles are nothing but the X scale and Y scale. When you drag it, you can see that the value of X is updating. If you drag this, then you can see that the value of y is updating. So by this scroll also, you can scale up or scale down. Now the next thing is this pole. This pole is to rotate your image in polar way. And this rotation is to rotate your image with the projection center axis. So let it be 0. So to avoid pole and rotate, you first make your surface normal and then apply the planar mapping. Say close and job is done. Now let's have a small break and meanwhile you can like this video and subscribe my channel. Thank you.
Now let's see this mapping to cylindrical surface. And for that I'll go to next part. So this is my cylindrical part. Now the same image I'm going to map on this part. For that go to view, appearance, select any material, apply the material. Part. I applied the same material to the entire part. Now I'll go for appearance, edit it. I'll go to texture, image, I'll browse the image. Miss, dropper, I'll drop it. Now you see, the same image is dropped to this cylindrical surface. Now by default it is parametric one. Parametric one is uh, auto mapping. So if you are satisfied with this result, you can go with parametric or you can do some changes. Now here, I can do some scaling, something like this. And my job is done. Now if you see this side, this is something different. This doesn't look like a circle one. This is okay for me. So in such cases, you can go for cylindrical one. So I'll go with cylindrical now. Now again, when you are going for cylinder, first you make the surface normal. Otherwise, your pole will be rotated like this. And then you will be adjusting this pole to your requirement. So it is better to be in parametry first and then switch in the datums, say normal to this datum, zoom it and now you go for cylindrical. Now if you rotate, it is exactly normal to the surface. No need to adjust this pole and rotate this. Now zoom this, this area looks very fine but this area doesn't look fine because when you are going for cylindrical one it is extruding these holes to this surface also so it is not like a box kind of mapping and that is because this surface is totally planar one and this surface is cylindrical one so when you are using cylindrical mapping then you need to be very careful so in this case I'll just remove this the texture and then I'll say OK. Once again, I will go to appearance and I will clear all appearance. Say yes. Now when you are trying to map a cylindrical surface, then the procedure is slightly different. Select the material. I'll apply it only to this cylindrical surface. I'll say OK. Again, I'll go with edit, texture, image. I'll browse the texture image. Using this dropper, I will drop it into this surface. Now for this surface, I can go with cylindrical. Again, I will go with the same item, this surface and this surface. And for this surface, I can go with planar one. So go inside the appearance, edit. Now first, you make this surface as planar and then Go to texture, dropper, drop it, select the planar. Now this is the planar one, now you have a better control. Now you can adjust the way you want, make it normal and scale down if you want. Zoom it. That's it. Close it. Now for cylindrical surface, edit, dropper, select this surface. And now for this surface, you can go for cylindrical one. But before selecting cylindrical, first make it normal. And then go with cylindrical. Now you can adjust this by scaling. Now 
zoom it just try to match the whole size from the top one and your mapping is done so this is how we do cylindrical mapping same way you can go for box mapping and spherical mapping so this was the whole idea about mapping the need of mapping and the procedure of mapping and i hope this video will be helpful and don't forget to like this video and subscribe my channel thank you so this is it guys now like this video if the video is helpful share this video with your friends and subscribe my channel for further updates.